Hey guys, Andy here again. So I by accident shorted this out. This was the 4 amp uh, wall charger. And yeah, it shorted out, but I can't find what blue, so I'm pretty certain it's one of these MOSFETs, which is very annoying. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna, I would, I would be spending a lot of time to figure out which part, because I already checked all the fuses in it, but whatever. So then I went back to using my solar pulse width modulated charge controller and this guy and using the 2 amp one so I definitely won't take it apart since it's so it doesn't get very hot so anyways yeah and I'm just um, charging up these batteries to retest again uh, I'm gonna be building my own spot welder using a super capacitor I saw a pretty good video so I'm gonna try that out but yeah other than that it's just frustrating that uh, unfortunately you know, unfortunately I blew that up. So, anyways, on to what I actually wanted to make a video about until everything broke. Uh, so, 3, 3S, 4S, or 7S? That is the question. So, let's look at this. As you see, I've got 4S right here between these two terminals. And I have 3S between these two terminals. And then I've got 7S. So I have all three on one board. And it's got a 7S BMS. So it'll auto balance itself. Which is fine. Um, if you're using just 3S or 4S really heavily. It'll really mess up the BMS. Which, uh, you know. So you can't like just always do all three at once so why wouldn't you want 4s or 3s well unfortunately like i've said in my previous videos you can watch them it's a bit fucky so 4.2 4.2 4.2 so 4 8 12 this is like 12.6 volts so you want to have like 14 14.4 volts but this is only 12, so you're losing a lot of your capabilities. And this one is 4, 8, 12, 16, 16.8. This is way too high, just by, possibly just by 0.8 volts. It's too high. So then this guy, this is a 12 volt inverter, uh, 300 watts, modified sine wave. It won't work because these batteries are too high of a voltage. So you'd need a buck converter to chop it down um, in order to get your full voltage out of it. So I do have this guy. He's um, connected. I just use a cigarette lighter just for testing purposes. And yeah, see, works just fine. If I do 4S, it won't. It won't at all. And uh, I don't have a buck converter, I just have a boost converter. I'm still waiting on my buck boost. But, yeah, pretty pretty simple. The thing that is important to see about this thing is that this BMS, as soon as these three are used in a load, this BMS will prevent any current to flow. It'll drop it down to 7 volts as its emergency shutoff. And it'll stay like that until it can balance these three with the rest of the batteries. So you can't use this guy with this BMS. So you just unplug that little plug down there. You just pop it out while you're using the 3S. But then when you plug it back in, it'll see an imbalance and it'll be upset with you. So that one, that's, you know, that's a little problem, but whatever. But anyways, yeah, it works. And I ran this one and that one at the same time for a tiny bit. But then as soon as this one, you know, brought these batteries down more than the rest, then the big guy turned off. So, anyways. But yeah, it's, I just thought it was cool that you can build a 7S system and experiment with 3S, 4S, and 7S all at the same time with the same board. So, I'd recommend that if you're uh, not sure what to do. Or if you want to just do experimentation and get a good idea, you just buy 7 of these. 
put them all in series, and that'll give you lots of power to run like a very small 24 volt and 12 volt inverter. And then you can buy a tiny little buck converter to uh, run your 4S, um, try and run it, and buy a BMS, like a 4S BMS, a 3S BMS, and a 7S BMS. And, you know, um, you could create adapters for these little clips for to connect to each battery. And, yeah, you can just see which one you like the best, which one gives you the most power. It'd be pretty interesting. I think I'm going to do that since I have 14 of these extra. So I was thinking of making a, a, a prototype wall where it's only one row of these across and all the electronics with it. All right, so... It's a really super small board that you can take with you. And then I'd have a 24 volt inverter, which I do down there. And I'd have it on the same board. And then I would have an inverter, all the equipment. And I'd say the only difference between this prototype and my full system is my full system has a lot more batteries to it. And then I could take it around with me, take it uh, like uh, on the road to show people, teach them about this kind of technology, I think it would work really well. Uh, so I might, I might start diverting to that, making, making that project. So I've been working more and more on this, and well, looking back at my other videos because I feel like I had misinformation, which I did. So I was wanting to use, yeah, I was wanting to use this as a kill switch because I believed that this breaker uh, wasn't fully a kill switch, but it is. I, uh, there was something wrong with my multimeter, and it was giving me resistance. Most likely, my hand was touching the leads um, at the same time, because I can't recreate the problems I was having before, where if I press the button, and this is now an open circuit, I was getting, like... 3 mega ohms or something, which is high, but it's still not an open circuit. So it must have been going through my body somehow. Uh, maybe maybe the wires were faulty because I have new leads for my multimeter, so maybe that's what's going on. Is my leads were, were messed up. They were pretty old and in rough shape. So anyway, so now I can just use two of these instead of using these shutoffs. Which is fine, I can return this one if I wanted and get my money back. Um, actually, I could probably return this one too, since I didn't really wreck it or modify it at all. I really like it though, I feel like I could do something with it, some kind of project. I don't know why. I can return this guy, since uh, this concept didn't work, to turn one of these into one of these. Um, I just ended up ordering parts, so return this one, and uh, this one I can probably put back in its bag and return it. So I can get my money back for it, but do I really want to? Because I feel like I can make something out of it. Um, I've had a lot of a lot of people subscribe lately and uh, comment, and I really appreciate that. I, I really enjoy um, people's questions and people's advice. Uh, it's really, you know... It really makes, uh, makes, gives, like, this project perspective, which I really, really appreciate from everyone. Um, doesn't matter what your question is, I still really appreciate them, because it really helps me, um, understand what direction I'm going in. Because, uh, most of the time I'm, I'm just going by the seat of my pants, so to speak. Uh, I'm not using, um, like, I'm not, I'm not building a Lego set using the instructions, I'm just finding parts, I'm watching other people's YouTube videos, taking other people's advice, and I'm throwing it all together, so. One of the, the next thing I really need to do is I need to actually trip one of these breakers, and I know I can do it with my current wall, so I need to do that, um, using, I think, my computer and a light bulb and my heater. I can probably do that. These are all dead batteries. Um, I don't think I'll even bother trying to do that pop-up method. I let the magic smoke out of one of them trying to do that. 
I don't know if they're if they've had that much heat damage where the the internal fuse has popped. Would you really want to use them again? Like they're already pretty badly damaged. So I don't know. Maybe I'll try again. I've got all these guys that I'm I'm starting to work on all my messed up ones. I soldered this one together while I'm waiting for my um, waiting for my super capacitor to come in. A uh, 2.7 volt, uh, 350 farad super capacitor will be enough to solder these. And I'm pretty sure I have nickel strips, so I'm going to go find that today. And I've got to repair all these and spot weld all these together, all these, and all these. So that will give me a lot more batteries. And right now I'm working on switching back to the good batteries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all those batteries and I'm going to put them in here and take out all these batteries and I'm going to let these batteries sit for a month. And that'll, because I charged up to 29.4, it's been sitting like that all night. So I know the BMS has properly balanced every row. So then I can test and see if um, there's any issues anywhere. So yeah, that'll be that'll be a lot of work, but that's that's fine because I need to do that. But I can do it at any time, which is really nice. I I really like that part. I should have done it with these really good ones down here, but instead, for safety's sake, because I didn't know how long I'd have them uh, out of commission, I brought them all down to two point two point nine something like that. You know, I brought them way down just just for safety's sake. But yeah, I, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what to do because, um, that, f this guy was a piece of junk, so now I'm looking at other options, um, I'm looking at a big one of these, I'm looking at a 36 volt version of this, it just pumps out 36 volts, 33 amps, it's like $130 for this power unit. But it puts out 33 amps, and then I just have to MPPT charge controller, solar charge controller, and then it'll it'll run like all of the walls. So I'd have a power supply like this, and preferably an MPPT, and then it would do all of the walls, so every single wall. So instead of having one of these, or instead of having one of these for every single one of these walls, like so seven of these, I just have one that mimics a solar panel and with an MPPT charge controller, I would uh, be able to buy solar panels and hook them up to it and wouldn't lose any money because you'd want that MPP, MPPT charge controller anyways in the future. So you wouldn't be losing any money because this is like a loss of 20 bucks and this is kind of a dead end, but if you're, instead of buying a whole bunch of solar panels to equal 33 amps output, like a 24 volt solar panel, max output is 36 volts, right? So what's, um, you know, what's, how much money do you have to spend to get 33 amps out of a solar panel? And I only have to spend uh, $136 to, um, output 33 amps of solar, right? Fake solar because I'm using a solar charge controller. Let me know what you think, because it's 130 bucks for 33 amps output constant, versus buying a whole bunch of solar panels, and if you buy the MPPT, then you can buy solar panels and hook them in with it as well, and then you're off to the races. So, hope you liked the video, hope it gives you some ideas. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a good day.